What up, what up? It's your girl Mariah. You're now tuned into Survival Kit, the podcast. Today is March 10th, 2022. Today we're going to be talking about the 10 business commandments, right? So yesterday was March 9th, and as we all know, as some of us know, that was the anniversary of Biggie's death. And so I figured, why not dive into the 10 business commandments, right? We know it as the 10 crack commandments, as he so eloquently put it. Uh, but in business... There's some is rules and regulations. There gotta be some type of law in place. I feel like without law, there's no order, right? Um, and so it don't gotta be strict laws, but it's just a few things that you gotta keep in mind when you run an operation. So as we know, um, you know, hustlers they have street laws and in business there's business laws. And I just feel like the two when you really take a look at it, the corner and the corp the corporate setting. It's not very different uh, when it comes to the actual... Just take away everything that you believe about it, right? Um, and look at the shell of the two things. And you're going to see some very similar some very similar moods and methods of operating, right? So let's hop right into it. I like to try to keep it short and sweet for y'all so y'all can get what you need. Get in, get out. You feel me? All right, so here we go. 10 business commandments. Rule number 10. Consignment strictly for live men, not for freshmen, right? What does that mean? Normally, when you buy someone consignment, you buy it with the understanding or the contractual obligation to pay it back. Normally, it's like 30, 60, 90, 180 days, depending on you know what you have, what type of agreement you got set up. In business, you know, we know when Biggie was talking about it, he talking about when you get fronted, you got to pay that thing back. If not, things happen. In business, you want to be able to stay good with your suppliers, right? Even in business, we have suppliers. And so I remember one time I had a certain supplier, and I wanted to know just out of curiosity, was I able to purchase a certain amount of inventory and I could pay them back? They said, well, you're still new in business, so no, we can't offer you that. The ones that are more tenured, you know, they've been with us for a while, they've been a client of us for a while, we normally give them that type of situation and they can pay us back over a certain amount of time. We send you an invoice and you pay that over a certain amount of time. But because you knew, right, a freshman in this case, we can't give you that same type of thing. So understanding that you got to know where you are in the game, right? You got to know where you are in the game and don't, you don't ever want to get to a point where you got too much inventory, you don't know where to put it, uh, or you can't sell it because you really don't understand your clientele. And so now you have so much inventory and you can't get rid of it. You know, you just don't want to be caught in that type of situation, all right? Strictly for live men, not for freshmen. Moving on, rule number nine, stay the, away from police, okay? Loose lips sh sink ships. I got these braces and they be, kicking, they be kicking my behind when I say stuff like that. Loose lips sink ships. <laughs> there we go. All right. There's secret recipes, there's secret formulas, there's all types of things in place for a reason. Uh, I want to say that's why you have patents, that's why you have copyrights, that's why you have trademarks, right? The things that you create, you want to keep them exclusively for yourself and for your use and your purposes in business, right? So obviously, you know, the way Biggie was kicking it, you know what I'm saying? Stay away from them rats <laughs> in business. You know, you want to stay away from the people who might give away your secrets. That's why a lot of times in business, you sign, especially, you know, let's make it simple with the nine to fivers. You might have to sign a clause. There might be some type of contract at your job and a clause in it is you're not able to work for a similar person or a competitor. Why? Because you might be giving away confidential information. That's why you go through HIPAA training at work for those of us who work in certain settings. Why? Because you can't give away the private information, all right? You got to remember, loose lips sink ships, all right? Rule number eight, never keep no weight on you. Now, obviously, when Biggie was talking about it, he was talking about his, you know, his product. He don't keep it on you because you might get caught slipping. Well, in business, when that, I, I think of that, don't keep no weight on you. I think of literally the weight of the or the pressure of the business goals or the business needs. You can't keep that weight on your shoulder. What does that mean? That means you have to alleviate yourself from certain things that you do within the business. I cannot do every single thing. I got to build a team or an army. 
uh, and I have to be able to delegate these tasks out. Even when it comes down to something simple like a business manual. So every job should have some type of training manual. And that gives the breakdown of each thing that's, that you do. And one of the jobs I had was called tip sheets. And so anybody that comes into the role, they'll have these tip sheets and they'll be able to reference the tip sheets and be able to handle the different tasks that's going on. You got to have those certain things in place because you'll crush under the weight of that pressure. And God forbid something happens to you and someone new comes in to take over business, they're not going to know what to do, right? You got to have certain things put in place so that when the next person comes in or more help comes along the way, you can delegate that weight out. You feel me? All right, moving right along. Number seven, keep your family and business completely separated. Now, this one not everybody agrees with. I love to look at some of the, I'll say some of the more established business families. Um, a lot of families who are wealthy have some type of tax business. Um, some type of firm. Uh, I have a Mitchell and Anderson Enterprises. That's my business. Um, and I just think that certain things can be done with family, but you have to have the business wherewithal. You got to have the knowledge to know who you can work with and who you can't. You, you can't keep the, the stealing cousin around. <laughs> All right. That firing family and firing friends can get very, very tricky. Uh, I remember I attempted to do a business venture with a friend, uh, and it, we didn't even get it off the ground. It got the power struggle got real off rip. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I can be very bullheaded, um, and that's something I, I wear with pride because it's gotten me this far. However, at the same time, I got to understand, and I had to learn that uh, that's cool when you don't know a person, right? This is just your personality. This is how you come across. So they'll always know you as that and they'll respect you as that. When you know this person, right? Like, y'all know each other's secrets. They, they used to call you Mook Mook. You know what I'm saying? You used to have a snotty nose. Like, <laughs> they're not going to respect you in a certain manner all the time. Some family can work through it and I respect those families. I admire those families. I, I aspire to be, have that type of, um, that type of bond in a family structure. Um, however, you got to be careful because if you ever, you know, if you ever got to fire somebody and that, that happens to be, you know, your mama favorite nephew or favorite niece, uh, things can get tricky, right? So try to keep that separate. So moving right along, we're going to get into number six. That goddamn credit, forget it. Okay, so what do I mean by that? I'm a, I'm a spinning. I'm gonna make it a double entendre, right? So, this the example that Biggie gave. You know, giving giving that credit out. You know, is if you think you're gonna get that money back, chances are you not. Cause if, what I've learned, if a person's asking you for money, it's cause they don't got it. So, chances that they're gonna have it, it's kind of slim. Unless you just know that person, you just know that they're sturdy like that and y'all been through the trenches together and you understand that they got me, I got them. Granted, I'm not talking about y'all. What I'm talking about <laughs> is the people that you know is not gonna pay you back, right? You just you know they're not gonna pay you back. Those type of things you wanna you wanna be careful. Um and also that comes to giving customers credit, right? So they want a service, so they want a product, and they, hey, I don't really got the full thing. Can I give you some now? And I give you the rest later. I don't operate like that. I've learned my lesson very early in business. That don't work. Um, not for me anyway. It don't work for me. I don't know. Maybe y'all customers is more loyal. Uh, but you know, especially when you're selling high ticket items, you want to already have those systems in place, right? So, like with my uh my custom clip rugs. I have a system in place where when we first start business, there's a certain balance owed. And then before you get your product at the end, there's a certain balance owed depending on what you get. And that's how I keep track of everything. Um, and when you want to buy certain things from me, there is an afterpay option at checkout. So I don't even have to worry about that. You can handle that however you want to handle it. And I let that third party handle what they're going to handle. I get mine off the, off the, the back end first and then 
know what I'm saying? We go from there. So be careful when it comes to that. Also with credit, I'm not knocking any of the business credit gurus, uh, teachers, believers. I just think you have to be careful. Again, this uh, I mentioned it in a few other episodes. Survival Kit, the podcast, this is for the new business owner, right? So if you're an experienced business owner and you, you're tuning in, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Drop a comment uh, in the review box and all that good stuff. But for the new business owner, be careful with business credit. You got to build a, a sustainable business. Think about personal credit, right? You have to build that up, right? If you're coming from where I come from, the credit is not always good when you first hop off the porch, right? Uh, somebody might have put something in your name. We love our mamas and our grandmas and our uncles and aunties, but sometimes they be our daddies. You know, they be scamming sometimes. And it is what it is. We do things to survive. However... You still have to build up that credit that you have, right? You want to build up to that 800 and above credit score, but that's not how you start. So you might not get the, the car that you want. You might not have the, the type of credit to get the house that you want. You got to build up to that. I look at business the same way. You don't want to jump out the gate with all this business credit because at the end of the day, you have to pay that back. Um, and a lot of times your business structure might not allow you to just write certain things off. Sometimes, depending on the business structure, there's pass through income and there's things that you have to report. It can get tricky. Obviously, have your people in place to help you out with everything. I'm not a business credit guru, so I'm not going to give my opinion, you know, too much of my opinion on that. I just, from what I can see from some business owners, uh, that business credit can get a little wild because you can get a lot and then you got you sometimes people forget that credit is just that it's a credit that has to get paid back all right so be careful with that that's i ain't mean to harp so much on that but i just want people to be careful one of the biggest things that we have an issue with finances is credit uh, from personal to business credit uh that credit that debt is uh, it's crazy, so just be careful, all right? If you ain't get nothing else from that, I'm saying be careful with that credit, okay? Or move right along. What's the other commandment? Number five, never sell where you rest at. In business, I literally mean just be careful with uh, mixing and mingling your personal with your business, all right? There was a, a tweet I seen uh, earlier today, and it was a... Uh, a DJ or a producer, and he was just saying to some of his fellow producers and DJs, you know, if you're going to reach out to an artist, don't reach out to them simply because the end result is that you, you're trying to, you know, get at them or smash or whatever you date them or whatever. Just ask for the date first. And if y'all happen to organically make music or make, uh, you know, a business deal, then do that. But have your intentions be known up front. That way you can avoid drama all of these commandments is in place so that you can avoid drama who wants the drama for life right we on our mary j blige this year no more drama no pain you know no more drama in my life <laughs> okay so try to stick away try to stay away from that uh, you know kind of if you hire somebody off the strength that you just think they're cute uh beauty is fading and eventually you start getting to know the real them and that that cute face is not so cute no more when the money not right the books ain't right that cute stuff go out the window so again never sell where you rest at okay just try to keep your personal life and your business life separated show you through your business and that's what branding comes into play but try to keep when it comes to the serious financials and the books and all that the core processes of business keep that separate all right rule number four commandment number four this is my personal favorite i believe this with my whole heart <laughs> never get high on your own supply when biggie said it he was literally saying don't smoke what you're selling in business literally don't smoke what you're selling don't burn up your money it you ain't you're not gonna have any and that goes back into rule number 10, because if you got anything on consignment, you can't pay it back because you done burnt up all your money. I'm saying that it, that goes back to rule number eight. Never keep no weight on you. Now you stressed out because you done burnt all your money. 
You know, when if you got family working with you, family going what they family want their money before they did any work. So don't tell them that you don't got their paycheck. That is gonna get it's gonna get hectic. All right, it's gonna get hectic. That goes in a rule number six. That goddamn credit, right? You can't pay that back because you done burnt up all your money. You can't get high on your own supply. I'm speaking from experience. I'm so passionate about this because. This is what I've experienced, right? When you first start out in business, especially if you got a good item, you come out there, you hop off the porch with a good item, right? You got a good product, good service, customers is booming, they're coming through, they're buying from you, you making money in your sleep, you're hearing that you're ching on your apps in the middle of the night. So I know that's a great feeling. When you mind your business like 2 in the morning and your iPad up, open, you hearing that cha-ching, that it get crazy. So you're getting excited. All these endorphins is getting released. But you know money is coming in the bank. And then you start spending it. You start taking from your from your account. You start spending that business money to pay the your personal bills. And all oh, the car note is due. Let me just take from this and put it over there. Oh, dang, I forgot to pay the light bill. Let me just take from this. And put it in now granted if you got a home office you might be able to do a little home office deduction but seek advice from your accountant and your cpa for all that good stuff right but again you don't you don't want to you don't want to take inventory or money from yourself unnecessarily because what that does is that puts you in a bind like i just said it goes into all the other commandments now you're in a jam you jammed up because you didn't spend all your money or you didn't use up all your inventory. Uh, it just, even this hat, if you're watching, I got this hat from Lady M. Shout out to my shorty. Side note, Taya Love, my, my wife, uh, just had an article written on her in Voyage uh, ATL magazine about Lady M's fashion vans. Very, very proud of her. So if you're listening or you're watching, go shop with Lady M's fashion vans. Uh, on Instagram and Facebook and, you know, shop with her. She got headbands, beanies, bonnets, face masks, all kind of good stuff for you. She's also um, a hairstylist, so she's very, very adamant about things that's good and protective for your hair. So back to rule number four, never get high on your own supply. This beanie I'm wearing is a Lady M's uh, creation. I pay for this. I literally paid for this. I don't. I tr I do my best not to take inventory. I don't care what it is. I will go and buy my own fabric and ask her to sew me up something off the strength. Um, but I'm not taking. I'm not taking inventory from the brand. You want to know why? Because that puts her in a bind. That puts the business in a bind. And now we're taking from the inventory, and that has to be accounted for. I'm very uh serious about being on top of the books, looking into some new uh, accountants and everything right now. I just want to make sure everything's in place. You always want to make sure everything's in place. You don't want to take from yourself. It's not a good idea. And it's a hole that it's hard to dig yourself out of. Again, I'm speaking from experience. All right? That hole that you dig when you take from your business is hard to get out of. I remember I looked at the books and I'm like, dang, we made how much money? I don't see it though. Why? Because we were spending it. Because we was doing good. And you know, coming from where I'm coming from, the minute we get it, we're going to go overboard. Like, I ain't never had it. I'm going to go over the top once I get it. Right? So, lesson learned. Just be careful. Don't get high on your own supply. Please don't take money and in inventory from your business unless you have it set up that you are an, a paid employee of the business. That's just, you know, that's that's the way I see it. All right, I can could, I could stay on rule number four all day. Again, that's my favorite commandment. I absolutely love that one because it's so true and it applies to every aspect of your life. All right, so for the sake of time, we're going to move on number three. Never trust nobody. You feel me? Now, when I say that, yes, it's good to trust your, your business partners. You have to build, but you have to build that trust, right? Um, Like the great philosopher, the other great philosopher from, from Brooklyn uh, said, you know, it gets dangerous. Money and power is changing us. All right, Jay Z. He was speaking real talk. When money gets involved, people get different. Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't that way. But again, when you don't have nothing and you start getting some or you get something, uh, money money can change people a lot. Um, you know, even I'm sure you out there know if you are the breadwinner in your family, or you 
uh, not even your immediate family. I'm talking about your whole family. Everybody asking for money. Cousin so-and-so need this. Auntie need a favor. I helped your mama back in the day. It, money changes people, right? So you just want to be very careful with what you have and what you share with people because, you know, money can get you jammed up. A lot of people get lined up for for money issues um, and thinking that they can trust certain people that they just shouldn't have trusted, right? So make sure you're being careful with all that. Rule number two, never let them know your next move. I know we all get excited about new business ideas and things that we have going on, um, but you just want to be careful uh, when it comes to sharing some new some new things that you have going on. Simply because, you, again, you don't want people to steal. That that goes back in the commandment number nine. Stay away from them police. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't want the competitors and the the certain people who boast too much just being Joe because they kind of try and get you in a situation. You know, y'all know how people can get. Y'all know how people can get. We know how it gets when you got good things going on. People steal ideas every day. Big corporations still from the little guy, little guy still from the smaller guy. It's a, to me, it's just the circle of the business life. Um, but you want to be careful. Again, everything isn't for everybody. I know, again, I know we get excited about new ideas, but be careful with what you share. Make sure your paperwork is in place before you get things moving. Always have a backup. You always want to have a plan B for your plan A. I know people say there's only plan A. To me, that's piss poor planning. Um, they always got it. There's always a backup. I went to school for PR and there's always some type of contingency plan in place. There gotta be a contingency plan in place. All right. So always have a backup just in case, but make sure you, you know, keep things to yourself until everything is situated and figured out and then present it. So it looks at least halfway decent. Again, we we like to believe in just getting started over here at Survival Kit. Just make sure when you are getting started, you're just keeping certain things under wraps until you can really present it in this best form, all right? Commandment number one, never let no one know how much dough you hold. Never let no one know how much dough you hold. I can't harp on this enough. I hate when I see the sales post on the gram. This how much money my business is making. This how much we got. I understand for motivational purposes only. I get that. I just want you to be careful. Again, that goes back into number two. That goes back into number three. That goes back into number nine. <laughs> you just... You have to be careful with being flashy. I think the day and age that we live in with social media, so many people are watching every little thing you do. And the minute you look very successful, um, you become an easy target. So you just want to be careful about sharing how much money you have. I, honestly, I feel like money, um, you know, the bottom line, unless you're a publicly traded company, your financials should be kept between you, your partners, and your accountant. That's just how I feel. Um, again, unless you're publicly traded and, you know, you have stocks and dividends and all that good stuff, those financials, they, you don't got to post it on the gram. We know you eating because you, you done upgraded your car. You looking nice now. You at the good restaurant downtown. You know what I'm saying? You traveling every other month. We, we know you eating. You don't got to show us the account. We don't need to see the money in the account. Keep certain things for yourself. Again, the competitors see that. And if there's some foul play with competitors going on, every competitor is not a good competitor. And we're living in a cyber world. Somebody might just be smart enough to hack your account. I'm just saying, th these things happen. Uh, you know, you just want to be very, very careful with flashing your bread. Um, and flashing how much you're making in your business. You want to keep certain things sacred. That's just my opinion. Again, this is all my opinion. This is just my take on the 10 Kirk Commandments. It's the 10 Business Commandments. You know, I love, again, I love hip-hop, so I definitely wanted to touch on this. R.I.P. to Biggie Smalls. This was a great song. I play it often, uh, and I think it applies to business in every, in every sense of the song. Again, when you take the the hood corner boy 
uh, enterprise and then you look at the corporate enterprise world and you strip everything out and you look at the shell of each, they definitely line up. You don't believe me? Take a look around you. Pick your favorite hustler and pick your favorite business and put them up next to each other. I guarantee you want to see similarities. All right. Again, it's your girl Mariah. This is Survival Kid, the podcast. Thank y'all so much for listening. I hope y'all enjoying this so far. Stay tuned for more. We come in every week, every Thursday, 6 p.m. If anything is to change, of course, I'll let you know. All right. Stay locked in. Peace.